How you doing folks? It's Ron Grovis from Ron's Beer Reviews and Tools. And I've got a beer to showcase today. As you can see, up oh, it's over here. I'll grab it. Showcase today for you. We'll be reviewing from Red Hook Brewing Company. Uh, out in Seattle, Washington. Uh, basically, uh, it is now, I get the information on it, it is now part of a consortium, uh, believe it or not. Uh, let's see what we got here for, for the information. All right. Red Hook, Red Hook Ale Brewing Company. It was founded in 1981, and that was in Seattle, Washington, by a Mr. Gordon Bowker and a Mr. Paul Shipman. They were the founders in 1981 of Red Hook Brewing, and it took off and did very well, and it's still doing very well. It just happens to be part of uh, an alliance called Craft and Brew Alliance, and they have five breweries and uh, cider companies under their belt. Kona Brewing is another one, Cisco, which is well, the parent of this here. They're part of, uh, of this uh, alliance. Craft Brewers Alliance. Uh, let's see, as of January 2013, Anheuser-Busch brought it to 30, 2013 they brought in, 30, they purchased 32.2 percent of the business which opened dis distribution for all of those other five which is a great great thing. Uh, this 7.1 percent ABV is a bi-coastal IPA. The reason they say bi-coastal it's the best of both IPAs, the West Coast and the East Coast. And the East Coast, as you know, they have their juice bombs. It's basically, I think, if you don't know it, uh, him the word juice bomb, it's not stringently, not high hoppy. It's high hoppy, but the hoppiness comes out in a fruity flavor. And that's why the juice bomb, the juices of like the fruits of pineapple, grapefruit, nectarine, a lot of the tropical fruits. And that's New England on your West Coast IPAs, they're more, I call it astringent, more hoppiness, a true hoppy flavor, and it's uh, fantastic for folks that really enjoy the IPAs, the hoppiness of the beers, because you can get some truly good IPAs out of the uh, West Coast IPAs. They're very flavorful, and you have to really um, like hoppiness. You have to have like the, you have to like those hoppy beers because they can go up to a hundred uh, international bitter units, majority 90, 85, 90 on that business there of the IBUs. Uh, you can see the label, it's got the bicoastal, we've got the octopus grabbing two west coast and east coast together. Uh, let's see what they have to say. They say, uh, th this is an unlimited, uh, I mean, correction, it's a limited release. <laughs> uh, limited release features the bright new and experimental, this is, there was, when I purchased these, I think there was four of them that were experimental. They'll only be out as experiments and may not even be produced, may not be brewed after that. The Bicoastal IPA is the first of these limited edition beers. A mashup between a hazy New England IPA and a tropical West Coast IPA. Bicoastal IPA glows with juicy pineapple and passion fruit of hop flavors and a dank, dry hop aroma. The, the, the artwork on this is by Mr. Mr. Derek Vandergreen, Grind, G R I E N D. I'm not murdering the name. That um, that artwork of the octopus. But you had seen earlier a closer uh, picture of this. All right, let's uh, not waste any more time. I'm all done with my work today. It's uh, a hazy day. It's going to be raining in a little bit. Oh, I want to do a shout out. Uh, on this, see this shirt? That, that's from the Red Lion Inn in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, which is way over on the western part of the state. Yeah. I'm familiar with, with uh, Stockbridge. Um, fantastic place. This place is fantastic. The rooms are laid out like from the 30s and the 40s, and uh, they have some newer rooms. But also, you can just go there at the bottom. They have a fantastic, uh, like in the, I would call it a cellar, but 
They've turned it into a nice place, restaurant and uh, place to drink. That's where my loving wife went down there. We didn't spend the night at the, the, the inn. We went downstairs in the inn and uh, had a few beers there. It was really, really, really nice. It is very famous for Norman Rockwell when he, he's painted it, that inn, one of his uh, famous paintings. It was across the street when he painted it. And he painted a lot of the people in around Stockbridge and locations in Stockbridge. It's a nice trip to go there. You have the opportunity. Um, do visit. If you come to Massachusetts, definitely try to visit Stockbridge. Stockbridge and Sturbridge. Sturbridge is another place that's like a set back in time to the to the 18, I think it's called probably the 1880s, 1890s. I guess they call it the gay 80s, uh, the late 80s. A good time in the United States. All right. Uh, working, no more. So, I'm going to uh, have some, uh, there is some uh, Jameson in here mixed with uh, Fireball, the cinnamon whiskey. Oh. Oh. How sweet it is. Famous with the Jackie Gleason, the actor. All right. No further ado. I've been talking enough. Go to the glass. Save the water. Drink the beer. All right, we got this. Opener. Yep. You got it an open, famous opener. Klein. You familiar with tools? Klein tools. Very popular with the workers, very popular with the electricians. Klein tools. They make a lot of different types of tools. All right. No further ado. Oh, look at that color. Dark, dark gold. Dark orange. The brewer itself is saying it's going to be dank. That just may be. Wow. That is quite the color. Quite the color on it. Dark, dark orange, a lot of carbonation in there. I don't know if you can see the carbonation through there. I'm getting some of the aromas of the maltiness. Yeah, breadiness, you know, the, the breadiness. Oh, this is from the Bruins. Congratulations to them for winning the championship. They didn't win the, <laughs> didn't win the Stanley Cup, but they got to the Stanley Cup. Well, that was good. Uh, tropical aroma, those fruits that are tropical. And, that nice uh, fruity flavor, or aroma, I should say. Stop showing the, the usually the, the, the maltiness stays. Spiciness now, I'm getting the spiciness. Usually the bready malt always stays. But maybe in an IPA is the gases. Go out kind of basically the beer is warming up. It, it changes quite the head on it. Look at that head. That is quite the head. Maybe you can see the saying on the glass now. <laughs> All right. I've been talking enough. I am getting a, a pineapple aroma. Usually that'll run in, in the flavors, they kind of match that. Oh boy. Definitely citrusy. I'd like to know what the hops are in this here. So I'm getting the, the maltiness, the, the fruitiness of the citrus, pineapple, grapefruit, and that should run in the flavor. All right, bottoms up. I want to get that the color of it. Bottoms up. The happiness came through. It's not as fruity as I thought. With the, as far as like the uh, New England juice bombs, just a little bit more stringent. Hoppy flavor is a little bit more prominent. A little bitterness at the end. 
the mouthfeel is definitely medium to full. It's really a, a, a full mouthfeel. Mm. With a lot of a lot of carbonation. I am getting excuse me through the hardness afterwards. Before the business, some pineapple. And um, have the more hoppiness to it. A little bit of stringency, as I say. It's not the juice bomb, a lot of fruitiness. I do get a lot of the flavors of pineapple at times. It's more so the, the hop supersedes everything else on far as the, the fruitiness and the tropical uh, flavor of the fruits that uh, you do get in the, in, the, in the aromas. A lot of times you get them in the aromas, you do get them in the flavors, but uh, not in this case. Now, because I'm drinking more so the hoppiness, bit, bit, and it's not, when I say bitterness, not mainly bitterness, it's just in the back end as you swallow it. What I'm going to do is, what I have here, I'm going to make a video of uh, just eating a hot hot pepper. I have a hot pepper here. I went to uh, uh, a farm down the street. There's a couple of towns away in Reading, Massachusetts, in uh, North Reading, maybe I don't know. But they have a, a farm there, and uh, they got hot peppers. The girls didn't know the name. They mixed them up without putting the names, and uh, they weren't supposed to do that. But they didn't know the names of them, so I bought a couple of hot peppers, and I'm going to eat them. I'm all prepared with water. And that cold beer, and uh, so I will see. But I'm going to do a, a video of just um, eating a hot pepper. I'm going to be prepared with some ice cream and milk. But um, I'll try this. No, it's just like a bell pepper. The green. I'm getting it coming up to my top of my mouth. Some hotness. Uh, I'm just squinting, <laughs> making faces, preparing myself with the heat. It's starting, starting a little bit of heat. Tastes good, crunchy. Burn my tongue now. Starting to build up the heat. It really keeps building up. My tongue's feeling it. It's got a good flavor to it. Don't know what kind of pepper it is. I'm going to bunch of hot peppers over there. Not bad. Not bad at all. That was spiced up. Some gravy, some spaghetti gravy. Or some soups. It was good. My mother's brim, my tongue is feeling it. But uh, back to the beer. I like this bottle, which is thinner and higher. Get more in your refrigerator that way. Alright, so I'll uh, end this uh, beer review here. I've been talking for a while. And, uh, I say have a good day. Shout out, a couple of shout outs to uh, my fellow beer reviewers. Uh, Backwards Billy down in the Del Mar region of Delaware. He does really good beer reviews. Ron Terrio, Ronald Terrio down in uh, New Orleans area does real good beer reviews. Jerry Foote, the beer review guy up there in Oklahoma, does real good beer reviews. Uh, Arizona Ghost Riders. In Arizona, as westerns, they do re reenactments and so forth. They do very well. And there's plenty of other ones out there that I can't think of now. Uh, let me think. Well, I'll be here for a few minutes where I finally would come out with one <laughs> that I remember. So, with that said, folks, have a good day. Enjoy the. Oh, John O'Neill is another beer reviewer. He does well. So, uh, Beer to CB 82. He does. I like his channel. A lot of guys like it because in Galto, because of uh, he basically does working 
on trucks and tools, he deals with tools, but he has some other, he does, he does some kind of like, almost like bushcraft, some crafts and so forth. So, pepper the stuck in my tongue there, my right, tooth, I mean. All right, folks, have a good day, enjoy the day. You're gonna drink, be responsible for what you do. Don't drive, and kids underage, don't drink. Ciao.